Hi, this is Mark from ATM UK. I'm here with Holly Stevenson from Hunstent and Sea Life Sanctuary. And we're just here to talk about the events that have happened over the last 12 to 18 months. Um, 12 months. 12 months. Um, so, Holly, going back 12 months, tell us uh, about the disaster that struck. It was around about this time last year. It was uh, December 5th last year. We were hit with a tidal surge that came over the seawall through the front doors and flooded the building to about three foot. Uh, luckily, it didn't enter any of our fish tanks, but it did leave us with no power, and we had to do an emergency evacuation within two days. Uh, thankfully, we lost three fish during the whole evacuation. They were three mackerel that were a bit geriatric. Other than that, all the fish went round to other sea life centres. Some of them went to Weymouth, some of them went to Scarborough, some of them went to Great Yarmouth. And we had to strip all of our tanks back to the absolute basics. They've been relined, resealed, some of them have been reglazed, new filter beds, new filtration everywhere, new filter media everywhere, new gravel. And we started from scratch as of about June this year. Excellent. And can you tell us a bit about the refit, how long that took and what was involved with the... Uh well, immediately following the flood, we had to strip everything out. All the old gravel came out, the filter beds came up, everything was taken right back to basics. The tanks were then reglazed, refiberglassed, all the new filtration went on. They were then rethemed, so we had concrete in every tank. Uh, filter beds were put back in, new gravel was ordered. I think there was 16 tons of gravel arrived on site and got distributed amongst the fish tanks. And the fish arrived back uh, middle of September. They started to come in. Okay, um, about two years ago you stripped your ocean tank down for a glass replacement? Yeah, uh, yeah, general maintenance, the tank was 25 years old, the glass needed changing. Okay, and you, same sort of thing, stripped it all right back, replaced the glass, filled it up, restocked. Yeah, yeah new gravel again, new filtration. Everything, everything from everything a clean start. New, yeah. Was there any product used at the time to help with filtration? No, we didn't use a thing on that time, uh, it was just filled back up fish back in, heavily stocked again, and it was just massive water changes on a regular basis, okay. pretty much daily, sometimes twice a day. Okay, so there, there was sort of problems you were encountering at the time? Yeah, your general just... maturation yeah. issues, I, from memory it took a couple of months to mature, get rid of the ammonia and the nitrite. Excellent. And obviously you're in a lucky situation here where we're literally 25 metres away from the seawall um, and you pump straight from... Straight from the sea. Straight from the sea. Filtered as it comes in. And yeah. Then, yeah. Straight into the tanks. Excellent. And you say that took sort of... How many weeks to mature the systems? From memory, I think it was a couple of months. Yeah. Um, obviously being tropical, it wasn't horrendous. The levels never got ridiculously high. Um, but it did take a good couple of months to get rid of all the ammonia and the nitrite and for the tank to calm down. On the 23rd of September this year, you had your first resident back to the site, um, Ernie the sea turtle. Yeah. And uh, it was also the day we seeded all your systems with colony. It was. Um, and you also had a Arctic lorry arrive from memory, full of fish. And yeah, that was the, the stock coming back from London. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly that was our tropical freshwater stock. There was a couple of tropical marines and a little bit of native. Um, but it was our big Paku, di uh, Paku display that we came in mostly. Okay, and obviously this time using Colony on all the systems, how did you find the experience comparing it to, you know, sort of a couple of years ago with the ocean system? I was going to say, compared to even a general fish setup, um, the results were very, very low. There was minimal ammonia, there was no ammonia in some of the displays, um, whatever there was, was low. A couple of them had to be topped up, that piranha tank, if I remember rightly, had to be redosed, but that went from zero stocking to very heavily stocked. And after the redose, the levels calmed down within a matter of days and have stayed down since. There was a lot of aquatic life brought back to the site. How many How many fish are on site, and um, roughly? Oh, in that delivery, I believe there would have been between three and 500 fish came mm -hmm. back on that, on that Arctic lorry. And then two days later, there was another 500 fish Right, so in the first couple of weeks of new systems, we didn't have any major spikes, any major problems with any of the systems at all. I know we had a couple we redosed. Um, that was uh, quite a few fish coming in over the space of a week or so. Yeah, a few days. <laughs> um, anything else since then that's uh, come along? 
no, everything seems really happy. I mean, uh, we've been open, what, three weeks now, three and a half weeks now. We've already got sharks laying eggs. We've got seahorses popping out babies. We've got enemies dividing. Everything's eating really, really well. It's got over the transport stress and the move going into a new system that you would expect to have water quality issues. Everything seems really happy. The sense is really good. The water clarity is absolutely fine. And they've even coped with the thousands of people that have come through the doors. Excellent. Okay, Holly, thanks for your time. Um, just really would like to thank you for calling ATM in to come and uh, help you out. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much for coming down and helping us out. It has made our lives a lot easier.